on this beautiful Sunday morning. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today? Let's all stand. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done
Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Let's be seated. It's so good to have guests with us today. We welcome our guests to Coral Worship Center. Amen. I heard one pastor say one time before he got ready to discuss something with his church. He said, I certainly hope I don't have buyer's remorse <laughs> after I'm done. And he, had, he was dealing with um, social media and, and different things, and that's not what I feel uh, to do today. But I hope I don't have buyer's remorse after I'm done. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3, and then Proverbs 27 and 12. Can I have plenty of time today? Thank you. Um, everyone say unity. 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 Unity has brought this church through some deep waters. And it will continue to bring this church through deep waters. Unhealthy, immature self-serving attitudes don't create unity. They don't enhance it. Only mature families and mature people can rally together, put aside personal differences for the larger cause and purpose and navigate forward. Healthy families operate that way. So um, I'm going to address something today that I don't want to address. Even my wife warned me. Now I got your attention. Because a lot of times I listen to Sister Jones. She said, we're on two different wavelengths, honey. We're on two different wavelengths with this. She said, I support you. I, she said, but you just, this is what I, I sense and I feel. I said, well, this is where I get a lead alone, I guess. Which, going into ministry, my pastor kind of warned me about, you know, there's going to be seasons like this. So um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lead. I'm going to teach biblical principles from the Word of God. I'm going to lay out some application. It's nothing new for us uh, in the last 18 months. Um, so anyway, with that said, Proverbs 22 and verse 3, if you're there, say Ben. Yeah. Proverbs 22 and verse 3. I'm on Psalm 22 and 3. Let me get to Proverbs. The prudent, I would say the prudent. Or a prudent man, I want to say a prudent person, foreseeeth the evil, and what do they do? Are they scared? Does it talk about fear? Or does it talk about wisdom? You know, you can be hiding yourself and not have fear. You could actually hide yourself from danger and it be wise. Now, no show of hands, but we're in North Idaho. We have a lot of people that have guns. Do you carry a gun? Do people carry a gun because they're scared? And if some, and those that carry guns, why don't you just trust God for your protection? I believe in carrying guns. Don't get me wrong. You're all about to shoot me. <laughs> but you get the point. They carry it out of wisdom. Wisdom. Yes, it's a constitutional right, too. Thank God for it. But it's done out of wisdom and caution. It's not done out of fear. So you can be prudent. A prudent person foresees the evil or danger and hides themselves. But the simple pass on and are punished. How many of y'all want to be wise? How many want to be simple? Proverbs chapter 27 and 12, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, 27 and 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Twice. Now, the book of Proverbs is not a book of promises. It's a book of principles. 
that if we do this in general, this is what happens. Okay? So, our text teaches us that prudent people foresee danger and take proper precautions to protect themselves. So in the case of our text, prudent people will see them, uh, will hide themselves from danger. Now the word prudent means acting with or showing care and thought for the future. I won't say care and thought. Care and thought. So notice the attitude and the spirit of the prudent. They have foresight. A prudent man foreseeth, foreseeth. They have foresight. They see it. They see the danger and its potential harm it may cause. Therefore, they hide themselves from that danger. Hide means to hide by a covering or to be absent. To keep close, conceal, like your guns. Oh, we're in Idaho, half of us open carry, but a lot of us conceal. To hide self or oneself to keep secret. So it just basically means to hide. So it's important to notice the prudent are not hiding themselves from the danger out of fear, but out of wisdom. But the simple are not so. The simple ignore the danger and continue on, and they end up facing harm. Simple simply means silly, foolish. So the silly or foolish, the silly simply means having or showing a lack of common sense or judgment. It's quiet today. It means absurd or foolish. See, the simple ignore the danger. The simple continue with life as usual and think that they will not be affected by that danger. Well, I just trust God. I'm not worried about it. Okay, then why do you drive with your seatbelt on? Why do you drive with your eyes open? Why do you drive with your hands on the steering wheel? Why do you carry a gun? Just trust God. Jesus, take the wheel. Come on, practice what you preach now. But no, I keep my hand. I do trust God, but I keep my hands on the steering wheel. I do trust God, not because it's the law of the land. I don't want a ticket. But because there's safety in it. And I'm protecting myself from the danger of some guy cutting out in front of me and me getting in a wreck by me T-boning him. I drive with my eyes open. Not because I don't trust God. I trust God, but you know what? I just understand that I'm not going to tempt the Lord either. Right. I'll never forget as a brand new Christian, my Volkswagen wouldn't start out in front of the church after my prayer time. And man, I mean, I, I, I was only saved just a few months. And I'm praying, God, you can start this car. God, you can start. Man, I got faith. I believe you can start this car. You know, I'm 20 years old. And, and, and finally, after pleading with God and trying to start it, trying to start it, and I said, Lord, speak to me through your word. And I opened my Bible up, and in red, bold letters, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. <laughs> so I don't know what I did, called AAA or a mechanic or something, got it towed. I got the message loud and clear. We're not to tempt God. So we want to be wise. I want to say wise. So we want to be wise as a church body. We want to be a church body that is prudent. So allow me to speak of a danger that is not coming, but that is already here. Now, I don't know if you've gotten the news flash. I mean, we've only been in this for a year and a half now, but COVID is real. And there's a danger to it. We're not afraid of it, but we're not going to bury our heads in the sand. In the last year and a half, we have been very flexible and we have fluctuated with the surges and the diminishes of the numbers. 
You all know that when we decreased in the numbers, what did we do? We went back to our in-person services on Sunday, and then we went back to our in-person services on Tuesday. And, man, we scheduled a ladies' retreat thinking that COVID was going to be dead. And don't worry, ladies, we're not canceling ladies' retreat. Okay, relax. Take a deep breath. <laughs> all right? But we're going to move with what's going on. So newsflash, I don't listen to CNN. I don't listen to Fauci. I don't really put a lot of stock in the CDC because they're all over the map. They're like, it's like watching them try to nail jello to a wall. Right. Was it old Charlie Brown or one of the comic strips? You know, he would throw a dart at the wall and go over, and he would draw a circle around and say, see, I got a bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about some of these experts. I'm more kind of the grassroots type person. Uh, we, we see what's going on with friends on Facebook. Uh, and I'm just talking friends. I'm not trying to get news sources off of Facebook and social media. That's not a good idea. But we, we have uh, friends that are in the medical field. We got a couple in the medical field here in the church. Um, and what's going on? We have a friend that's a pastor's wife that's a nurse practitioner, and she works in their hospital in her area. What's going on there? What are your hospitals like? It all matches. We're, we're on some minister's forums. We gave a couple of these to Lucky and Chrissy, probably a half a dozen over just the last couple of weeks, which is just a sliver of what's going on. There's a lot of sickness going on. We're in a, big, we're in a bigger surge now than we've ever been in with COVID. I don't know if you know that. It's just, it's just what's going on. I was talking with somebody here. Uh, earlier that I guess Kootenai is actually reaching down into Benoit County needing some help because they're so overwhelmed. They've converted one of their rooms, a education room or conference room, and they got it all lined up with beds waiting in case. That's wisdom. Wow, we're really getting full. We get a lot of COVID patients. We get a lot of ICU people. We better make some. That's called wisdom. Hopefully they'll never need it. And hopefully this does what it did in India and South, South Africa where it was a quick surge, it lasted a few weeks, and then it went down fast. And hopefully that's what happens with this. But while it's here and it's blowing up, we need to make and take precaution. COVID is real. We're not afraid of it. How do you threaten a Christian with death? But how many of y'all want to die premature? Yeah, I know God knows all our time. He's God. So there's major outbreak going on. This is our third wave, for some would say. We've seen major increases. I think Idaho had roughly 5,000 cases in the last week. Something like that. I mean, back in the beginning of July, we we're like down to 47 or 48, 49 cases. That's a big increase. Time does not permit me to list all the names of the churches, pastors, pastors' wives, preachers, preachers' wives, saints that have tested positive and many who are struggling. By the way, church, thank you for giving to Brother Poe. He's an evangelist. He got steamrolled by COVID, uh, not going to be able to preach until the end of the year. We were able to give him $500. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Prudence says that we need to see it for what it is and respond with faith and common sense, and not fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But ignoring the danger would be foolish. So there are scriptural examples about taking cover during times of danger. What did God tell the Jews to do when the death angel was going to pass through the land? Go out and play football? Hey, man, y'all don't worry about it. It's for the Egyptians. You just don't worry about it. Just trust me. Go out and kick the ball around. Just have fun. Go smoke some brisket. No, he said roast the lamb with fire. Cover your doors and do what? Stay in your house. The death angel's passing through. Stay in your house. Don't go out, and if you don't put the blood on the doorpost of your house, you're going to be affected by it. That's called hiding. That's called taking a shelter. 
Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 deals with leprosy and with mildew, mildew and mold. The sick people quarantined themselves. So they did in the Old Testament. When there was leprosy, they quarantined themselves. If there was question about it, they quarantined themselves. Quarantined themselves for seven days and, or 14 days. They come back to the priest, and if there's still question, quarantine again until they were pronounced clean or unclean. Did you know quarantining started with God, not Washington, D.C.? I know that's a revelation for some of us, but... Um, Serious skin diseases. Verse 13, the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron. And he goes on and lists. Verse 4, quarantine. Verse 5, quarantine. He goes on and on and on about quarantine. God said if there's a skin disease, quarantine it. God said that to Moses and Aaron. We can't help what the White House does and the, and, and the political figures do, and no doubt this has been politicized. I've told this church from day one, I don't care where it came from. I don't care where you stand on vaccines. I don't care where you stand in your personal feeling. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying I, I'm careless. That's not the issue to me. That's a personal decision between you guys and God, and we respect one another's decision, even if we don't agree with it. That's what mature people do. <laughs> Romans chapter 14, one Christian eats meat, the other one doesn't. He's a vegan. Paul said, look, don't use your personal preferences that you're doing to the Lord because you're both doing it to the Lord as a justification to disrupt the work of Christ within the local body. Some Christians esteemed every day alike. Others took one day above the other. Maybe they were Sabbath watchers. It wasn't a heaven or hell issue. Don't destroy the work of God for your personal view. They both did it to the Lord. One group wants to get a vaccine. God bless you. Get it. I'm not condoning, I'm not a medical doctor. Others that you've got serious concerns about it, you think it's the mark of the beast, others think it's of the devil, whatever you think, God bless you. Don't get it. I respect your decision. I honor your decision. That doesn't mean I condone or agree with it, but I honor it because you're my brother or my sister. You get a vaccine and I disagree with it, I still love you in the Lord. You're still my brother, you're still my sister. This is called maturity, folks. So I don't care about vaccinations and all of that. The only thing I care about is are we in a surge? And if so, how do we respond as a local body to navigate through it so we minimize our risk of public worship service? How many of y'all want to go back online only? But we're going to have to make adjustments along the way, are we not? Amen. To navigate to sail through this storm. The good news is Jesus is in the boat. Yes. Okay. Amen. So prudence. Prudence says we need to see it for what it is and respond with prudent faith, not fear. Ignoring the danger is foolish. So they hid themselves, uh, the Israelites. We see that with leprosy. God is the one that instituted quarantine way back yonder. Wasn't Pharaoh. It was God said it to Moses. Y'all got that? Y'all see that? Y'all okay? David. Remember when Michael let him down through a window? He, 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 he was gone, man. You got to get out because they're coming after you, David, and they're going to kill you. I just trust God. I'm anointed the king. I'm in the anointed one. God has a plan for me. I'm staying right here. Now, there was a time that David fought. He fought the giant. But there was a time that he needed to skedaddle. This was that time. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 19 and 12. What about Paul when they let him down the wall in a basket? Because they're trying to kill him. There was a pact on his life and they were all this group of Jews were fasting that they were going to trick him and trap him and kill him. And they got wind of it and they let him down by a basket. Y'all remember that? Was Paul fearful? Was Paul full of fear? Well, I just trust God. God's going to protect me. There were times that, yeah, that was the case, but not this case. They let him down by a basket and said, that's your deliverance right there. Your deliverance, Paul, was in a basket. 
1 Samuel 23, 23 says, See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself. That's a reference to David. David's hiding himself. And come ye again to me with a certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. David hid himself. The giant killer hid himself. Jeremiah 36, 19. You all know a prophet, a prophet of God, Jeremiah. Then said the princes unto Barak, Go hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, and let no man know where ye be. I'm a prophet of God. God, I'm not going to bow to that fear. That's no. He, he listened to that. That was a season. How about Jesus? John 16, 15, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force and make him a king, he departed again into a mountain alone. He went again into a mountain himself alone. I want to say alone. Brother Clyde, was that you? Pizza. <laughs> All right. See, we want people's cell phones to go off because we just keep racking up the pizza. All right. John 8, 58 and 59. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? This God in flesh. Jesus hid himself. I want to say he hid himself. Was he full of fear? Was he full of fear? Was he afraid? Was he scared? No, it just wasn't his time yet. He hid himself, went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. John chapter 12 and verse 36, while ye have light, believe in the light that they may be children of, that ye may be children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Did he do that in fear? Nope. Do y'all get the point here? There's, there's a time when hiding yourself is wisdom. And prudent. There's times you don't hide yourself and you're going to fight. There's also times to hide yourself because it's a wise thing to do. So, CWC, we're doing our best. Am I perfect? No. Do I claim to be perfect? No. Do I claim to have special access to God? No. No more than you have. I'm flesh and blood just like you guys. Yes, I'm called the pastor. Yes, I'm called to oversee this local church and serve you guys. That's the structure and the order that God places within the church. But that doesn't mean I'm a lord over God's heritage. But sometimes, you know, I am an overseer. And sometimes I have to look at stuff and say, okay, this is the way that I feel like the Lord would have us walk. Is there scripture? What can we do here? There's a lot of scripture on what we can do. I'm doing my best to lead this church body during a pandemic. You know, when you come back from a four-week sabbatical and you're exhausted, there's a problem. We didn't recover from the first shutdown. The energy that it expended out of us, and I'm not asking for a pity party. I'm just being transparent with you guys. We're not ready to lead through another one. But <laughs> glory, here we are. Thank you, Jesus. So we just do it. His grace is sufficient. Amen. 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 So I want you to know my heart. I want you to know my heart. And that's what I'm sharing with you today is my heart. Um, I'm imploring us to work together, to be unified, to look out for each other's best interests to make the necessary adjustments in our personal lives that we are not exposing ourselves. Exposing ourselves to opportunities to where we can contract COVID. Personal sacrifice. How many of y'all value public worship? Let me see your hand. Do you know that comes with responsibility? You don't just hand the keys to a teenager and say, here, have fun, go drive. No responsibility at all. Just, man, world is your oyster. Have at it. Pedal to the metal. Nope. We want to work together. It's good personal responsibility. When each of us cross that threshold, it's no longer about I. It's about us. 
It's about us. It's about my brother and sister. It's about those that are vulnerable amongst us. Well, I'm not afraid of COVID, either am I. But I certainly don't want to be a guy or a person that contracts it because I've been out all over the place carelessly. Do you know we dodged a bullet last week? We had somebody in church last week that is now quarantining because they were around people that had COVID, tested positive for COVID, and they're having a hard time with COVID from my understanding. Day before they came, we dodged a bullet. We're like all week long, we're stressing out, Sister Jones and I. What do we do? Do we contact the church? And finally, I just said, well, you know what? If we're exposed, we'll know. We'll, I mean, if this happens Sunday, we'll know. Saturday, Friday and Saturday, the phones will start blowing up. I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. That means we had an outbreak. And, but thank God nobody is sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. We dodged a bullet. Thank God. I don't want to pray Russian roulette. roulette do you? So it's personal responsibility. We have to hide, adjust our life. If we value public worship. Now, if y'all want to go online, then we can do whatever we want. But once you step in here and look at this, I mean, we got half the church out today. So when everybody's here, it's really packed like sardines. It's not like we can social distance. If we had a church that seated 300 people and there were 60 of us, that's a little different. But we're, we're like sardines here. So we're all worshiping. You got people worshiping behind you, in front of you, next to you. I mean, there's all, you know, so it doesn't take a rock science to figure out how germs can spread really fast, be in each other's presence for an hour and a half. So it's going to take personal responsibility. We're going to bring back, okay, so now I want to get to the, to the heart of this. Is this all right today? Amen. So one way that we're going to protect ourselves is by reintroducing the health questions before people enter the building. All right? Is that all good with you guys? It's going to go back a week or 10 days, same type of health questions. It's just a, a wise way of saying, okay, hey, have you been around sick people? All of that. You, are, are you all familiar with the health questions, right? Okay. So we're going to bring those back um, starting next Sunday. And um, there's reasons for that. I feel like um, the motive is to, is to help protect. That's the motive. But I think it's just a good way to stay accountable for all of us. As I mentioned, we're not called to please ourselves. Boy, you guys are so quiet. Here we go. Now I really feel like I'm walking in the weeds. Philippians chapter 2, verses 2, 3, 8, uh, Verses 2 through 8. Fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I want to say others. Yes. Let this mind be in you, which was also where? In Christ, in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The mind of Christ is that life is not just about me. It's not about my rights. That's what this text is about. When it says that he did not think equality with God something to be grasped at, that's saying that he as God laid aside his divine prerogatives and rights as God, became a man, and as a man laid aside his rights as God and became a servant and obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He laid aside his own personal rights. He served. He washed feet. That is our model. We lay aside our personal, well, I'm an American, I got constitutional rights. Well, honey, I've got news for you. We got something better than the Constitution, and it's called the Word of God. Right. And the Word of God trumps the Constitution every time. Right. And I'm a full-blooded American, and I thank God for our country. But when the Constitution is made equal to the Word of God, there's a problem. When the Constitution is elevated above the word of God, there's a problem. 
The Word of God is our law. The Word of God is our authority. The Word of God is our direction. If the Constitution fits that, then praise the Lord. If it doesn't, then I'm going to obey the Word of God. We live in a society, my rights, my rights, my rights, my rights. Me, 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 me. It's not what Christianity is about. Now, it doesn't say ignore yourself. It doesn't say just look on the things of others and ignore your own needs. That's not what it's saying. It says look also on the, consider other people. Look also on the things of others. Romans chapter 15, 1 through 3. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Did y'all pick that up? We are not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to his edification. Well, wouldn't that apply here? I'm going to take personal responsibility. I'm going to come into the church building on a Sunday, and I'm going to make sure that, you know what, I'm going to be around other brothers and sisters, and I'm going to be around people that are very susceptible and very vulnerable to a disease. So I'm going to make sure that as a mature Christian, I'm not thinking about just me, but I'm thinking about my brother and my sister and the more vulnerable amongst us. And I'm going to adjust my life to make sure that I'm not being foolish during the week and just carrying on as life as usual, but I'm hiding myself. I'm taking necessary precautions because I want to protect the bigger picture, which the bigger picture is in-person services. It says, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as is written, the reproaches of them reproach thee fell on me. You see that? It's not about just us. It's not about just pleasing myself. We're a spiritual family. It isn't just about you or me. It's about us. It's about unity. We've had quite the journey, haven't we? You know, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul referencing marriage, he said, for this present distress, it's best that you don't marry. But if you have to, go ahead and get married. This present distress... I believe that's in 1 Corinthians 7, 25 through 29, verse 26. This present distress, is it up there, Ben? This present distress. There was something going on in Corinth, we don't know, that allowed Paul the liberty. It wasn't from the Lord. He's just looking at the situation. He says, this present distress, this present situation, it's best if you do X, Y, and Z. Because of this current virus, it's best that we do X, Y, and Z. Questions, number one. That's what we're going to start next week. Number two, we're we're not going online only. We're having in person on Sunday. Amen. 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 But Tuesdays, now this only applies to probably half the church, so it's not that big of a deal. We have more people come Sundays, and that's not a jab, that's a joke. But midweek is always lower. We know that. It's always lower. So midweek, we are going to go to family devotions in the house. Here's the options. Family devotions in the house. We will put a link, a YouTube link of like Brother Bernard or, you know, an apostolic preacher, church service, conference. So if you want to watch that as a family and then have prayer time, we can do that. Or, you know, we got singles and we got young people and all of that. If you guys want to do a Zoom Bible study on Tuesday at 7, there's a lot of options. One thing we do not have the energy for nor the staff for is to do what we did last time. And that's where we're sitting down in front of a camera, recording, re-recording, recording, re-recording to get it right, especially coming up on our busy season for Sister Jones and I that starts in a month. We don't have the energy or the staff to do that. That's why we're not going to be doing a live stream on Tuesday night. Okay? We're still going to have church in the sense that you can go on Facebook you can click on a link and you can watch good preaching. You can, you can have prayer with your family and Bible study with your family on Tuesday night. Okay? Get, take a book of the Bible and, and study it out. Dig it out. Have prayer. If you want to get on a Zoom meeting, I know Ben's familiar. Anybody here know how to do Zoom? Ben is the only one? John, you don't? Okay. All right, bro. Praise the Lord. Can we talk after service? <laughs> so we got we got a couple we got a few people here that can do Zoom. So maybe yeah. So maybe we can. We anybody else know how to do Zoom? Is it just just this side of the boat? 
Sister Rachel knows how. So th that's another option. So we want our people to be fed. Now, this is not indefinite, you guys. This is only till the surge subsides. Once it subsides, we'll kick back in and start doing midweek. So it's a way to minimize our exposure. My thinking is if it's, we're exposed on Sunday, we don't need to come back Tuesday with some of the same people that may be carrying it and have another round that if Sunday didn't do us in, Tuesday would, and then we all start getting um, sickness signs, symptoms later in the week. So it's just giving us space to breathe. Everyone say wisdom. wisdom. Okay. Um, I'm asking you to be unified. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I hope you would have an open enough mind. You can see that we're appealing to Scripture. We have scriptural precedent for this. It's Bible. We have a principle to build on, and that's what we're doing. I think I've exhausted this. I was, I was not looking forward to this service. I was not looking forward to this message. I feel good in my heart. I feel good in my spirit. I feel like we got scriptural precedent. We got scriptural example. We got scriptural principle that we've built on. And I'm, I'm imploring us to have unity. Everyone say unity. unity. Are we all on the same page? Amen. All in favor say aye. aye. I'll leave the other one alone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I love you guys. I love you. Thank you, sis. Um, the Lord just, you know what? You know what's really cool about this, Sis Jones, if you come to the keyboard? What's really cool about this is there's always an answer in Scripture for what we're going through. It may not always be what we want to hear, but there's always an answer. Folks, I'm a pastor. I don't want to have less church. I want to have more church. I, don't, I want to be here Tuesday night. You know what I mean? It's, so we're, all, we're on the same page. So let's pray that this goes away quickly, and then, boom, we'll kick right back into things, and we'll go from there. We've survived the first Two waves, we're going to survive this one. The church has come through with fine colors. The church has grown. We're going to believe the church to keep on growing. Amen. 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 See, I feel the presence. I feel like God's confirming this right now. I don't feel any like, ooh. I like people, okay, we get it. We see it. It's in Scripture. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be the wise church. So we get a choice. Do we want to be the first church of foolishness or first church of wisdom? I want to be the first church of wisdom. I want to have prudence. And you guys have prudence. You guys are incredible. You really are. And this shows and communicates your spiritual maturity. I'm watching churches that are being so filled with division over all this stuff. It's just, and we're just like, oh, Lord, have mercy. And this church, you guys, have rallied around. And I think the key of this is that we esteem others better than ourselves, that we agreeably disagree. I'm only focused on one thing, one thing. Are we in a surge? The answer is yes. These are the protocols that I pray will keep us from having a massive outbreak. It's not a guarantee, folks. We can still get it. We can still have an outbreak. But it minimizes the risk. And if we have an outbreak, and God forbid, I know for us it's sorrow. If the Lord were to take somebody home, that's their reward. They're going to be shouting on the streets of glory, but we're going to be grieving. What we don't want, if that were to happen, and we're having a going to life service, what we don't want is to have guilt. You know, we're kind of careless. We could have done more. Now we've lost so-and-so. We don't want that guilt. See, that's wisdom looks and looks at all of the scenarios and then comes back, prays it through, and then makes a decision. Amen? I love you guys. Y'all good with this? Okay. All right, let's all stand. I appreciate you being so attentive. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Anything that I said that wasn't clear, maybe misunderstood? Sister Jones, hold on a sec. Any, any questions? No questions here. No questions here. We're, we're big enough. Don't worry. Nobody's going to throw a tomato at you if you ask a question, okay? <laughs> Who's running the country? That's a good question. 
That's a good question. <laughs> we don't know, but we know who's running the church. That's all that matters is that we're a part of the church. The Lord is in charge and running the church, sis. Glory to God. Amen. Any, any, any other question? <laughs> I appreciate your humor. <laughs> any questions over on this side? Okay. Amen. Why don't we close the service by lifting our hands, worshiping the Lord, and thanking Him for guidance of His word.